In today's video, I will talk about MRI after ACL reconstruction and we will focus on graft integrity. If you haven't watched part one, where I talk about the graft signal intensity, I recommend you go and watch that video first and then come back and watch this one. So before we move on with the actual presentation, I'd like to say a big thanks to all the supporters of my channel, be it uh, via YouTube membership, or also via Patreon and you can find more about those two ways to support me in the description down below where you have the separate links. You get exclusive videos in exchange for your monthly donation and you can be part of a little MSK uh, fascinated community. And I have created a new platform. It's kind of like a private Facebook group where we can have discussions about the videos and other topics about MSK and I will make a separate video about that soon. So um, I recommend you check that one out. But now let's start right in. Okay guys, so in today's video I will also show you some actual MRI examples uh, as opposed to the first video. But I will also make a separate video with lots of examples uh, as a separate video after the whole theory is covered. Now today we talk about graft integrity of the ACL graft. So how does a tear of an ACL graft actually looks like? Now the theory is it's just increased T2 signal intensity in the graft, right? <laughs> It's not so easy. There are a few different signs that can help us assessing a tear of an ACL graft. So the classical teaching or the primary signs are if you have an obvious discontinuity of the fibers, that's obvious. If the graft is thinned, which means it's not the original thickness, that means that some fibers are torn and not visible anymore. If there is an increased signal, but this can be tricky as we saw in the first video, so signal intensity is not the best thing, and certainly not in the first post-operative year, so be mindful about that. It can be important later on, obviously, after the ligamentization is complete. And if you have wavy appearance, lax fibers, uh, if the graft or some of the fibers are oriented in a horizontal way, or all of the fibers, this is also a sign of a ACL tear, or a re-tear of the graft. Now there are some secondary signs, I mentioned here only the anterior tibial translation. It's not the best sign, so you can have tears without that sign, but I think it's and, and the opposite way as well, so you can have anterior tibial translation, but still have an intact graft. But I think it helps us to really be mindful about what the ACL actually does, and I recommend you have a look at this, and we will have a look here briefly as well. So the problem with tears of an ACL graft on MRI is that you need to have a proper clinical correlation and a clear medical history of a new trauma that is necessary to be there in order to confidently make a call of a torn ACL graft unless it's very, very obvious because MRI alone is just not really good. And there was a study with 50 patients that actually underwent a revision surgery because the ACL reconstruction failed and was torn. And in these 50 patients with actually torn grafts, the MRI looked normal in about one out of four patients, so in 24% of cases. So that means like one in four had a normal looking ACL graft on MRI, but it was actually torn during surgery or clinical examination. So we really need to have this additional information. And this is basically also the conclusion. MRI is not the exclusive tool to assess the graft. It's just an additional information, an additional tool for the surgeon to assess the reconstructed ACL. So here is a patient uh, after ACL repair. And the question is now, is the graft intact or not? And if you look here on this coronal, in the mid portion here, the signal looks quite nice. We can see the fibers here on the coronal thickness looks okay. We can follow it down here. So it doesn't appear to be really um, anything abnormal, but you really have to look at the whole thing, right? So let's make this like this. So you can see the graph coming down here, but actually tears do not only happen in this mid portion, they can also happen within the tunnels. And you can see here the screw, uh, which is coming out a little bit, but there is nothing really going down into the tibial tunnel. We've got some cysts here, maybe some ganglion cysts and some widening potentially here of the tunnel with a little bit of bone marrow edema, but we will come to this topic in another video. And you can also see this on the coronals, right? So there is, we should have graft material down here. 
and it's not the case so we have to graft up here and then kind of like at the entrance we kind of lose it so this is a disrupted acl there is nothing really going down there and we can also have a look on the axials here so basically you uh, follow it down and you can see here when we start up here we go down we can see here this area it goes down and then here it should be somewhere here but then kind of like within the tunnel so we've got the tunnel here and there is no graft material whatsoever and then it's just a screw that's coming up here uh, picking a little bit out of the bone so this is a torn ACL now here is another patient and it's a young woman after ACL I think it was even a, after a revision surgery so this was not just the primary surgery so she had a long history and the question was after like a, I think there was a mild trauma in the past and we did MRIs uh, a few weeks later and this was the image here we can see certainly uh, the screw here and as opposed to the previous case we can see how the graft is actually entering down the tunnel now I don't actually remember the actual surgery date and I also don't remember the type of surgery or the type of graft but for the point in this video it's not so important so we can see graft material down here we can see certainly graft all the way up here into the tunnel as well so at least some of the fibers are intact um, there's a little bit of higher signal down here and then there is a little bit linear signal here this one can look a little bit wavy or, or lax if you will maybe here this portion here looks also a little bit too high signal intensity um, so because the case is anonymized I, I can't really go back and have a look at uh, the actual node so uh, but just to show you here this was a surgically proven tor uh, like torn ACL at, uh, at surgery a few weeks later so they can look pretty normal but are still um, torn during surgery now what we don't have is a anterior tibial translation this one looks pretty nice here so what anterior tibial translation is if you have the tibia at this level for example and it's kind of like moved anteriorly but as I said this is not like the very best sign now here maybe if you now assess this case you could maybe argue okay there is maybe could be some graft impingement we could have maybe a partial tear because this one has a little bit of a wavy appearance but I would not rate this as a full thickness tear or like a complete torn ACL um, I just wouldn't but it was uh, based on the feedback from the surgeon so this is just to show you that it's very difficult and I think there are even separate or special sequences for for the ACL and if you look now at this one here which is a I think it's still a PD or a T2 and I mean if we start thinking about subtle changes like this one here even then there would be still more fibers intact than not and we could potentially argue okay so we have probably some kind of like a partial uh, partial tear or something but uh, not really a full thickness tear so this is really a good example to show you that it's very difficult now what's not really helping us is the T1 sequence because everything looks mushy and we can't even see the stuff so forget about the T1 it's not really helpful and with with 3D sequences I'm not a big fan either it looks really you know high signal and this is also in one of the like in the systematic review that I mentioned in the first video and I still recommend you go and have a look at it if you didn't that on gradient sequences or 3D kind of like can make whatever it wants so I would not rely on something like this even on the sagittal reformation I would not really go and be very sensitive about this uh, as long as we have other sequences so as you can see it's very difficult and this kind of like two criteria that we had a look at so far like graft signal and integrity they alone are really not giving us the full picture and I think key is really to understand that MRI is not the only tool it's an additional information in the assessment of the ACL and it needs to be correlated with the clinical symptoms history and so on and so on so this certainly will now affect the way we report so we cannot really comment on it's properly intact so we probably have to say something like signal and integrity looks okay on MRI and not be very like you know firm on one or the other side so maybe this will help you in the future because ACL MRI is difficult and 
The reason is because it's not just a black and white answer on MRI. So I hope this is helpful to you. If so, hit the like button and make sure you watch the next video. Subscribe if you haven't already and see you next week. So before you move on to the next video, I want you to briefly reflect on how much benefit you get out of my videos here. How much of the stuff that I'm teaching you can you actually apply in clinical routine? If you get something out of it, then you could consider to become a patron of my YouTube channel. Patreon is an online platform where people can support other content creators just like me. You can find the link over here and click there right now. Now, there are other options as well. If you really want to go to your next level in MSK, then you can consider to join the Virtual MSK Radiology Fellowship. You find the link down here and also in the description of this video. The Virtual MSK Fellowship is a one-on-one -on -one case based teaching program where I help radiologists to get to their next level by increasing their speed and especially confidence in MSK reporting. So go check that one out.